Well, this is uh, Chris Stratomanic Delaware. We are waiting for the beginning of Game 6 of the 2017 Dead Ball League, and I figured I'd open the video up a few minutes early, so that way if anybody would like to uh, get some pregame chat in, you know, we've still got the 7.30 time slated for the first pitch. And Jerry Ball is in the chat. Good evening to you, sir. Fanomatic Mike McAllister. How's it going, guys? Figured we would uh, open up the stream a few minutes early. We still got a 7.30 time slated for pitch number one here. <clears throat> so how are you guys doing on this wonderful Sunday afternoon, evening, wherever you may be? Hope everything is well. Everything's good here in Delaware. Good as can be expected, I suppose. Derek Dodgers, Royals fan. How is it going? Good, sir. Glad you could make it. Figured I'd open up the uh, video a little bit early so that way we could... Uh, Chat for a minute or two. Still got 7.30 slated for the first pitch. And figure we'll just show some score sheets. There is game one. Athletics 7-4. Big eighth inning. Rube Oldring with a base clearing triple there. But now I hope everybody is doing well on this Sunday afternoon, evening, and getting ready for the work week to begin again. For some of us, for others... It just keeps on coming anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> Even if it is a work week. I learned a year or two ago to stop looking at it as, oh, the weekend's here. It's over. I learned a secret. It's never over. <laughs> Game two in Forbes Field. Pirates held on for a 3-2 win there. Uh, scored two in the bottom of the fifth. Tommy Leach with a base clearing two RBI double. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Dodgers Royals fan just heard Dick Vitale rant about Ohio State getting snubbed. And Chris need to put in new dices for the Bucks. Yeah, but I dropped the dice so many times, they're not the same dice. I mean, I've got my backups right over there on the little shelf that I've got against the wall. I've got so many dice in these games. I need to find the dice that works and keep them. Ah, uh, Derek, no, Oklahoma State. Ow, snubbed uh, getting picked for the uh, March Madness for the tournament. Is that what you're talking about, Derek? I don't know if that was today or not. 7.26, four minutes to go. Here is game three. And um, first game in Scheib Park, and the Philadelphia Athletics win three to nothing. Uh, base clearing triple by Rube Oldring again. Complete game shutout by Jack Coombs. <clears throat> and USC is out as well. I haven't been following college basketball all that much this year. Um, in the past, I have marginally, but I haven't really followed it much at all. I've been so, so in with the channel and with Strat and with other things. The college basketball has just fallen by the wayside for me this year. Uh, I saw parts of that. I didn't hear how the tournament went. Jerry Ball says congrats to our man Ken Castro and his fourth place finish at uh, Earl Shamblin's APBA Heartland Baseball Tournament. Took place yesterday in Stillwater, Oklahoma. That was fantastic to uh, see all the guys there. I really, I need. We need to organize a tournament for Strat. We really do. We need to put something together. I don't know how or when. Oh, we got to do something because I need to play with other people. Ron's fun. I need to play with other people. <laughs> yep, game four, Pittsburgh won the middle game at Scheib Park, four to three. Won it in the top of the 10th inning. Um, ground ball by Dots Miller scored Abstein after his triple. And then we go to game five. Played two nights ago. Jerry Ball says, I'm going to get there next year opening day. I'll tell you what, we'll have an opening day tournament Saturday following. Figure out a way to do that. We'll have an opening day Stratomatic tournament. Beats, how's it going, man? Hey, figured I'd open up the uh, video a couple of minutes early so we could get some pregame chat going before the game starts at 7.30, slated for the first pitch. This was the game Friday evening, some of you may recall. 16-3 Athletics. Popped off six in the bottom of the third. Popped off six in the bottom of the sixth. Pirates have only scored more than five runs one time in the entire season. 
and five runs only three times the entire season. One of those times it took them 20 innings to get that fifth run. <clears throat> so I, I'm looking at if the Athletics score about five, six, seven runs or so in this game, it may be out of reach. Pittsburgh just does not typically have the offensive capability. they got to keep it low and keep it close, you know? So we've got some guys in here. We're getting ready to start here momentarily, but we are here for game six of the dead ball series. And the Philadelphia Athletics, they lead the series three to two. And let's go ahead and get this thing kicked off. This is Stratomatic Delaware, and we are bringing you the 2017 Dead Ball League Championship. This is game six. This could possibly be the final game of the series. Athletics have the series lead three to two, and we've come back to the Allegheny Valley in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Forbes Field. And uh, the Pirates are really looking to stave off defeat. The Athletics are looking to end it. Al Red Sox fan, welcome to the chat. Good, sir. Uh, let's introduce the starting lineups for the evening for the Pittsburgh Pirates in the field. We have uh, first base, Bill Abstein back in the lineup. Dots Miller at second, shortstop. Johannes Peter Wagner. Hannes Wagner. Third baseman, Bobby Byrne. Left fielder, Fred Clark, skipper of the team. Tommy Leach in center. Owen Wilson, the chief in right. Behind the plate, George Gibson, the backstop. And on the mound with his first start in the series, and this will thrill beats eternally, <laughs> Neil Maddox. <clears throat> Pirates have got to change something up. Maddox may be the way to go. Larry Harris, how is it going, OH, brother? Oh, yes. Yes, I uh, I need to watch all as much of that tournament as I can, but it looks so fun. We're going to have to get a tournament of our own going. Starting lineup for the Athletics. Um, batting first, Briss Lord, left fielder. Rue Oldring, center fielder. Batting second, third, Eddie Cocky Collins. Uh, second baseman and Frank home run, Kendall Stickmaker Baker. Batting cleanup, third baseman. Right fielder Danny Murphy in fifth. Stuffy McKinnis manning the first station, batting sixth. Black Jack Berry, shortstop, batting seventh. Jack Lapp still in the lineup for Ira Thomas, batting eighth. And Gettysburg Eddie. Eddie Plank is the starting pitcher for the Athletics, and he will bat from the ninth hole. So, uh, guys, let's go ahead and get this rigmarole all started up and stuffed. Eddie Plank with his warm-up pit tosses with Jack Lapp. I got the wrong team out. Yay, well, at least I don't need Whiteout to fix this one. <laughs> Wait a minute, Eddie. You're about three outs too early. Get out of here. Let Neil have the mound. Nick, let Nick have the mound. Nick Maddox. Briss Lord will be the leadoff batter for the Athletics. Nick Maddox on the hill gets his throws in with George Gibson. Looks into Lord. Here comes the first pitch of the game, 4-7, and that's going to be a ground ball to second base. Dots Miller gets in front of it, scoops it up over to Bill Abstein. That is out number one, and we are underway here at Forbes Field. Next is going to be center fielder Rube Oldring. Here we go. Nick Maddox with the pitch, 6-8, and Old Ring gets a base hit. He is on. He's going to be held by Gibson. They're not letting him have anything else. They're going to have to take it. That'll bring up Eddie Cocky Collins facing Nick Maddox. Here comes the windup, the pitch, 4-9, and that is base-clearing triple. Athletic score. Old ring rounds third. He scores. Collins rounding second. He's hauling it for third. He uh, slides in underneath the throw. And the Athletics are up one nothing in the top of the first. Home run Baker facing Nick Maddox. Here comes the pitch to the third baseman. Two, eight. Hard ground ball hit to third base. 
They're able to check Collins, and Byrne gets the throw over to Abstein, out number two. And that's going to bring us to right fielder Danny Murphy. Man on third. Maddox with the pitch. Two, four. Hard ground ball. Hit the burn again. Scoops it up. Over to Abstein and beats Murphy by a step. And that is going to end the top of the first. We are one nothing going to the bottom of the bracket. Up for the Pirates, top of the order. Bobby Byrne, third baseman. Tommy Leach, center fielder. Fred Clark, the skipper. Playing left on the hill for the Athletics. Gettysburg, Eddie. It's going to be a tough game for the Pirates. They've got to hold the Athletics defensively. They absolutely have to. Butterbench, glad you could make it. Only missed top one. Game six, this could well be it. Here is the pitch. Plank to Bobby Byrne. Six, seven. Hard ground ball hit to Blackjack Barry. It's short. He gets in front of it, gets it over to Stuffy McKinnis, and that is one away. Pirates. Tommy Leach walks out to the batter's box. A couple of warm-up slices. Eddie Plank gets the signs in from Jack Lapp. Here comes the pitch to Leach. Three, nine, hard ground. Uh, hard fly ball hit to center field. Rube Aldrin gets underneath it. Smacks his mitt, makes the catch. That's going to bring up Captain Fred Clark. Eddie Plank looks in, measures, gauges Clark up, gets a sign from Lap. Here comes the two-out pitch, 2-8, two, and uh, it is low, ball four. Clark is on base, and that's going to bring up Hannes Wagner, the Flying Dutchman. Here we go. Eddie Plank, he looks over to first to keep Clark close. Back to home. Here's the pitch to Wagner. Six, nine, fly ball to right field. Back goes Danny Murphy. Gets underneath it, close to the foul line, makes the catch. Bucks come up empty in the bottom of the first. Score is one to nothing. We go to the top of the second inning. Do up for the Athletics. Six, seven, eight, Stuffy McKinnis. Black Jack Berry. Jack Lapp. All right, Mike. Be good. Take care, Mike. Get what? Is Mike taking off? I didn't catch that above there. I don't want to scroll. But Mike McAllister, we love you, brother. You are the chewing gum that keeps us together. And unless you get hard, then we got to chew on you some more. <laughs> All righty. I think I just got an email. Here we go. Top of the second inning. Stuffy McKinnis, first baseman, faces Nick Maddox. Maddox with the pitch into the first baseman. 5-3. Hard ground ball. Hit the third. Baker gets in front of it. And it gets through for a base hit. Sorry, Bobby Byrne gets in front of it. It gets through for a base hit. Single for McKinnis. Blackjack Barry, he's got a man on first base. Ah, they are going to hold McKinnis. Takes him to a 111. Jack Barry is going to lay down the bunt. Nine. That will be batter is safe. Lead runner thrown out. Two six on the bunt. So Barry is on base. One out. Jack Lapp comes to the plate. Nick Maddox gets the sign in from George Gibson. Here we go. The wind up. The pitch. Five, eight. Pops it up behind first. Uh, Bill Abstein gets underneath it. Makes the easy play on the pop-up. And that's going to bring us to Eddie Plank. Two outs. Man on. Here comes the pitch from Nick Maddox. Eddie Plank. Four, six. Fly ball. Lazy to fly ball down the foul line in right field. In charges, Owen Wilson makes the catch. So we go to the bottom of two. Pirates come to the plate, do up five, six, seven. Owen Wilson, Dots Miller, Bill Abstein. Eddie Plank taking some warm up pitches with his catcher. 
Jack Lapp. Ball is brought back into the mound. Owen Wilson comes out when the umpire shows he's ready. Takes a couple warm-up swings. Plank with the pitch. 4, 10, and Wilson waits for a walk. Wilson is on base. Pirates with a runner. The leadoff runner of the inning, Chief Wilson. He is a B. Miller is 279. Uh, not going to try to steal. Miller's going to lay down the bunt. Oh, these guys are not bunting well tonight. Neither team. Bunts to the box. Um, Plank is able to spin around, get the throw to Collins at second. No chance to get Miller at first. So that will be one out. Dots Miller on first base. Bill Abstein comes to the plate. Eddie Plank looks into home. Gets the signs in from Lapp. Likes what he sees. Glances over to Miller to keep him close. Not a threat to steal in this situation. Here comes the pitch, 4-8, and that is a base hit for Abstein. Dots Miller rounding second, headed for third, and he slides in. Not even close to the throw. We have men at the corners, one out. Pittsburgh poised to strike. George Gibson comes to the plate. Eddie Plank would like to get in out here and bring Maddox to the plate. Gibson Takes the pitch from Plank, 5-6, and swinging at the knee cheese. Plank got himself to the number nine batter with two outs. And Nick Maddox has got nothing left to do but swing. Here comes the pitch from Plank, 4-10, and Maddox gets the free pass. Base is loaded, two outs, bottom of the first, back to the top of the order. Bobby Byrne. Third baseman, 226 in 1909. Eddie Plank would like to get this out and get out of the inning. Here comes the pitch, 6-10. Hard ground ball hit to second base. Eddie Collins all over it. Gets it to Stuffy McKinnis for out number three. And Pirates squander a scoring opportunity. Bases loaded. Leave three runners on base, and that's going to take us to the top of the third. Do up for the athletics, the top of their order. Uh, Briss Lord, Rube Oldring, Eddie Collins, Nick Maddox is set to go on the mound for the Pirates. Gets the sign in from Gibson, likes what he sees. Lord at the plate, Here comes the pitch. Four, seven, hard ground ball hit to second base. Dots Miller boots it. And Lord makes it to first safely. No play. Error by Dots Miller. And the Athletics have their leadoff batter on base. They're not going to try to hold him. I don't think they're going to try to steal in this situation. Nick Maddox facing Rube Oldring. Rube is going to take Maddox, Maddox pitch. Four, five, ground ball hit to second base. No chance to get Lord going to second. They get Old Ring at first easily. That was a four, five. Yep, that's a four, three. Gets there on the out. So that is one away. Eddie Cocky Collins comes to the plate. Man on second, Nick Maddox wants to get out of this one. Clinton Parks, hey, how is it going? <laughs> All righty. Well, who is your honey's, who is Honey Bunny's alma mater? That's what we want to know. Eddie Collins, one out, man on second. Athletics up one nothing. top of the third inning. Three, seven, and it is a single for Collins. Lord is rounding third, headed for home. Thrown out at the plate. Beautiful throw by center fielder Tommy Leach. And Eddie Collins is fuming over on first. And I got to say, Connie Mack is none too happy either. Frank home run Baker. Home run candlestick maker Baker. Iona is in the tourney. Cool. That's awesome. Alrighty, here we go. Maddox with the pitch, the two out pitch to Baker. One, nine, and Baker 
with a triple. Athletics score number two, Eddie Collins rounding third. Baker chugging behind him at second. Collins scores. Baker makes it to third on the hit. And the Athletics are up two to none with two outs in the top of the third. This is the do or die game for the Pirates. They need to win to keep this going. They are down three to two in this series. Best of seven. Danny Murphy at the plate. Nick Maddox. He's not shaking, but he knows the gravity of the situation. 3-7, and he catches Murphy swinging at a low pitch outside. That is out number three, but the Athletics have tallied another run. And we go to the bottom of the third inning. Due up 2-3-4 and four for Pittsburgh. Tommy Leach, Fred Clark, and Hannes Wagner. All righty. And everybody is set. Plank gets the ball back from the lap. Leach steps in, a couple of warm-up slices. Plank looks in, gets the sign from the lap, likes what he sees. He gauges Leach. Here's the windup, the kick, the pitch. Three, eight, hard ground ball hit to third base. Home run, Baker is all over it. Gets it over to Stuffy McKinnis, and that is out number one. And that'll bring us to skipper Fred Clark. Comes out, sizing Eddie Plank up on the hill. He doesn't look so tough. Plank with the pitch to Clark. 6-12, hard ground ball hit to first. McKinnis is all over it. He gets it to Plank covering on the plate. That is out number two. Plank covering on the play. I know what I said. It doesn't really matter because it's dead ball. John Franklin. All righty, Hannes Wagner. Ready to take the two out at bat with Eddie Plank. Plank with the pitch, 212 hard liner, hit to left field. No. Jack Berry gets his glove all over it, saves the base hit, keeps Wagner from extending the inning. And that is out number three. We go to the top of the fourth, 2 0 Athletics. And the Pirates don't want to let this game get too long in the tooth before they start putting some runs on the board. They need to do it when they have the opportunity early and often. Earlier, the better, especially against a team like Philadelphia. Stuffy McKinnis, number six, will be leading off, followed by Blackjack and Jack Lapp. Nick Maddox on the hill. Here we go. The pitch to the first baseman, 6-9. And that is a leadoff single for McKinnis, his second base hit of the game. Jack Berry comes to the plate. And they are going to go ahead and swing away here. Maddox with the pitch. Four, nine. And that is a single. And that's going to advance McKinnis to third. Men at the corners, no outs. Infield in for the Pirates. Jack Lapp at the plate. Maddox. Now he knows he's in trouble. He's wiping his brow on his shoulders, on his arms. Here we go. He settles in. So does Lap. Here's the wind up. The pitch from Maddox. 5-4. Fly ball to center field. Tommy Leach. He is back. And he gets underneath it. He makes the catch. But it is deep enough that McKinnis is going to tag up and he is going to score. Another run across the plate for the Athletics, three to nothing. Jack Berry still on first base, one away. Gettysburg Eddie at the plate. Plank, he's going to lay down the bunt. That's an eight, and that is successful down the first base line. Chased down by Abstein, gets it to Miller covering on the play. That advances Jack Berry to second base. And that's going to bring us to the top of the order with two outs. Briss Lord comes up. Nick Maddox, he's got a man in scoring position. He's already allowed one to score, three in the game. Here comes the pitch to Briss Lord. 3-7 fly ball to left field. This one is deep. Back goes Fred Clark close to the wall. Makes the catch. Thought that was gone. But it was not meant to be. However, the Athletics, they played another run. We get to the bottom of the fourth inning. Your score. 3-0. Due up for the Pirates, 5, 6, and 7. Chief Wilson, Dots Miller, and Bill Abstein. 
All righty. Eddie Plank on the hill. Takes his warm-up pitches with his catcher, Jack Lapp. Gets the ball back. And here we go. See, so here we go. They're going to be a fight in my chat room. Because Beats and Mike are going to start beating up on Jerry Ball. Because he wants his white elephants to win. <laughs> no fighting in the chat room, guys. Play nice. Don't get blood on the electronic furniture, all right? <laughs> Here we go to the bottom of the fourth. Eddie Plank. Here's the wind up the pitch to Wilson. One, ten. Pops it up behind first base. Stuffy McKinnis actually tracking in front of the base a wee little bit. Settles in, makes the catch. That is one away. That'll bring us to Dots Miller, second baseman. Here we go. Plank with the pitch. One, three. Pops it up behind third. Home run Baker tracking over. He calls off Barry. He makes the catch of that pop up. And Plank has got these guys. Oh, he's got them chasing gopher balls. Bill Abstein, first baseman, two outs, bottom of the fourth. Eddie Plank, the pitch, six, seven, ground ball hit to Jack Barry at short. Barry gets in front of it, scoops it up over to Stuffy McKinnis. That is out number three. And after four innings, the Philadelphia Athletics have the lead by a score of three to zero here in game six of the Dead Ball League Championship Series. Oh, ba 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 ba. And Clinton Parks. Ah, here we go. The lines are being drawn. Larry Harris, come on, Pirates. Oh, I see, I see a good old-fashioned Donnybrook getting ready to ensue here in the chat room. The lines are being drawn. Oh, no. Mike McAllister, I know he's a Pirate, man. Oh, goodness. It's getting ready to get ugly up in hers. Athletics up, top of the fifth. Rube Oldring leading off. Nick Maddox with the pitch. Four, six, fly ball to right field. It is deep. It is back there. Wilson on his horse makes the running catch at the foul line. Oh, goodness. Hauls that one back into the infield. That is one away. Eddie Collins at the plate. Cocky Collins, the second baseman, tripled his first time up, singled and scored in the third. Here is the pitch from Nick Maddox, 5-7. The dice are so excited they want to jump right out of the tray. Hard ground ball hit to Hannes Wagner. Wagner scoops it up, gets it over to Abstein for out number two. And the Pirates get down to business. They can score no more. John Franklin Baker, the home run maker, facing Nick Maddox. Here comes the pitch, 5-10. Fly ball to left field. Fred Clark gets underneath it, waits for it to come down. And keeps waiting for it to come down. Plays a baseball game on a cell phone like Chris Bryant. Still, oh, he makes the catch. That's the end of the inning. So the Athletics go down one, two, three. We get to the bottom of the fifth inning. Pirates, number eight and number nine are due up. George Gibson and... Nick Maddox, starting pitcher, due up third is third baseman Bobby Hearn. So Gibson comes out to the plate, couple of warm-up swings. He shows the ump he's ready, steps into the batter's box. Eddie Plank gets the sign in from Jack Lapp. Here is the windup and the pitch to eight, and that is a shot to the gap. Gibson is going to make it to second with a stand-up double to lead off the bottom of the fourth, the fifth inning, correct me. And that is going to bring up Nick Maddox. Maddox is going to lay down the bunt and does so beautifully. Right back in front of the box, Gibson got enough of a jump, no chance for Plank to go to, to uh, Barry. He gets it over to Collins instead at first base so that is a sacrifice pulled off to perfection one out pirates have a man on third bobby byrne comes to the plate infield in and byrne lays down the squeeze bunt 
Batter is thrown out by first baseman. Runners advance a base, and it works. Three, four, sack. The squeeze bunt by Bobby Byrne. Pirates are on the board. Two outs. They've got to run back. It brings up center fielder Tommy Leach. If they can just assembly line a few of these around. Eddie Plank, Gettysburg Eddie with the pitch, 4-9, and he issues a walk to Leach to extend the inning. Man on first. They are not going to worry about holding him with two outs. Leach is not going to run the risk. Fred Clark comes to the plate. Eddie Plank with the pitch to the Pirates skipper, 3-6. Hard ground ball hits a shortstop. Jack Berry knocks it down, scoops it up over to McKinnis, out number three. But the Pirates uh, finally answer back. Score a run in the bottom of the fifth. Your score is 3-1 to one, Philadelphia. We go to the top of the sixth inning, and they will be coming up. All righty. Do up for the Athletics. 2-3-4. Reboldering. Nope, because I put them on top. 5-6-7. Danny Murphy, Stuffy McKinnis, and Black Jack Berry, the shortstop. All righty. Nick Maddox. On the hill and ready to go for Pittsburgh. Gets the sign in from Gibson. Likes what he sees. Michael Butler, welcome. Glad you could make it. After five, score is three to one. Philadelphia, they lead the series three to two. This is game six in Forbes Field. And here comes the pitch to Danny Murphy, six, seven. Hard liner hit to left. No, Hannes Wagner gets his glove up, makes the catch. Out number one, Hannes Wagner showing great range out there at short. Stuffy McKinnis, first baseman. He singled his first two times up. Nick Maddox wants that to not happen again. 2-5 is the pitch. Fly ball to center field. Back goes Tommy Leach. Not too far. Pretty much hit right to him. Makes the catch. That is two away. And we've got Blackjack Berry, the shortstop, facing Nick Maddox. Two down, top of the sixth inning. Pirates down by two. Here's the pitch to Barry. One, eight, lines it hard to center field. No, Dots Miller snags, his, snags it. Prevents the base hit. One, two, three, go the athletics. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Do it for the Pirates. Four, five, six, Wagner, Wilson, and Miller. And we would like to take this opportunity to have a little short commercial for anybody who may be watching this video. If you're interested in this game and others like it, such as a cards and dice tabletop version for football, basketball, hockey, computer PC versions for the same, and also for college football, go to www.stratomatic.com and check them out for all the games, uh, electronic rosters, in-print card sets, you name it, they've got it. Go to the source, stratomatic.com. All right, here we go. At the bottom of the sixth inning, the Pirates are down two, and they are rallying. Eddie Plank is looking to put the screws to any more offense by the Pirates. Honest Wagner is leading off. 6-8 fly ball to center field. Rube Oldring chases in the lazy weak hit by Wagner. Makes the catch. Wagner did not get all of that one. Not by a long stretch. That's going to bring us to Chief Wilson, the right fielder. Facing Plank, he gets the sign in from Lack. Shakes off the first one. He takes the second one. Wilson's ready for the pitch. Here comes Plank's offering. 4-4. Four, four, fly ball to center field. And Oldring camps out underneath this one. Makes that catch as well. That is two away. Dots Miller, second baseman. Eddie Plank gets the signs in from Jack Lapp. Plank is facing into home, trying to gauge Miller up. Here comes the pitch. 1-11, grounder hit hard to short Eddie Collins. Shore gloved, gets it up in a hard throw over to McKinnis to get Miller at first to force him for the third out. And that's going to take us to the top of the seventh inning. The Athletics are up 3-1, to one, and the Pirates are running out of time. Leading off the Athletics uh, is going to be Jack Lapp. Catcher in the eighth spot in the lineup, followed by Eddie Plank and then Briss Lord. Jack Lapp is ready to accept Maddox's pitch. Both pitchers are going strong. They really are. 
Uh, four nine. That's the third time that four nine has come up, and it's the second time it's been a triple. Lap is on third. To lead off the top of the seventh inning, Max has given up that four nine three times, and twice it's been a triple. Oh, that is going to be Maddox Bain, 4-9. Eddie Plank comes to the plate. Infield is going to be in. Eddie Plank swinging. 5-10, fly ball to left field. Underneath it comes Fred Clark. He gets, he's kind of deep, makes the catch. Lap is able to tag up, and he scores, and the Athletics get that run back. They go up 4-1. to one. Philadelphia Athletics extend their lead. One out, top of the seventh. 4-1 to one is your score. Game six. A's are up 3-2. Yeah, triple by catcher. Well, Nick Maddox let him have it, you know? Briss Lord, left fielder, leadoff batter, one away, facing Nick Maddox, 5-8, pops it up behind first base, Bill Abstein is there, smacks his mitt, lets gravity do the rest, that is two away, and that brings us to Rube Oldring, hero of games one and three, here comes the pitch, 3-6, and that is a single by Oldring to extend the inning, he is on first, Eddie Collins comes up to the plate. Nick Maddox wants to get out of this. Eddie Collins is ready. Maddox sizes him up, gets the signs from lap. Here comes the pitch. 4-12. Hard ground ball. Hit the third base. Bobby Byrne gets in front of it. Snags it over to Bill Abstein. Out number three. But the Athletics keep the Pirates at arm's length. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Higher Ground Gaming, glad you can make it good, sir. After six and a half, the Athletics are up four to one. Game six, the Athletics are leading the series three to two, best of seven. And you've made it for the most important part of a Stratomatic baseball game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back for its root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. And that might be the last seventh inning stretch. I don't care if it wasn't sung in 1911, Clinton. Cut me a break. <laughs> Oh, now Red Sox fans singing along old ball game. Oh, goodness. No, I know it was written in the 20s, I'm thinking. 20, no, 30s. It was a depression song, wasn't it? 32, 33, somewhere in there. So I'm going to look it up and tell for sure. MP Fox, glad you can make it. Gary Marr, glad you can make it. Some late comers here. Quick update before we continue. Top of the seventh, bottom of the seventh inning coming up. We've just had the seventh inning stretch. Philadelphia Athletics lead the series three to two. Best of seven. This is game six. After six and a half innings, they're up four to one. And do up for the Pirates, the bottom of their order. First baseman Bill Abstein, George Gibson catcher, and Nick Maddox. Um, should he continue to pitch, depending on the offensive situation, if there's little chance of him scoring, they'll save him and let him pitch and rely on the top of the order in the bottom of the eighth. So Bill Abstein comes to the plate. Eddie Plank is ready. Written in 1908? Okay. Huh. All righty. Take Me Out to the Ball Game was written in 1908. It doesn't surprise me. Baseball was taking off. During the dead ball era, baseball was taking off. Eddie Plank is ready. Gets the, signs, gets the sign back from Jack Lapp. He likes what he sees. Here's the pitch to first baseman. Bill Abstein, 5'8", and catches him swinging at the knee cheese. That is one away here in the bottom of the eighth. George Gibson comes up to the plate. The catcher strides. Swings a couple of Herculean warm-up swings. Eddie Plank sizes him up. Here comes the pitch. 
Six six, and that's going to be a long fly ball to center field. Back goes Rube Aldring, close to the ball, makes the catch. Breeze is blowing in from the outfield wall here at Forbes Field today. Blowing in, if I recall, from the north. Because now blowing in, no, blowing in from the southwest because the outfield pretty much faced the Allegheny, as far as I recall. It's been a long time since I've been there. I was in Forbes Field one time, walking around, didn't know much of the history at that time, but Dad drove us over there after a ball game, and the place was barren, and there was an open gate, so we walked in and walked around Forbes Field. It was so totally cool. Two outs. Nick Maddox, he is going to face Eddie Plank. Here we go. The wind-up, the pitch, 5-5, five, five and gets Maddox swinging. So after seven... The Athletics have a three-run lead. We go to the top of the eighth. Due up is Jonathan Franklin Baker, Danny Murphy, and Stuffy McKinnis. Four, five, and six. And Nick Maddox comes back out. He is not done pitching. He's going to see this through. Win or lose, he wants to see this game through. Fred Clark knows it. Fred Clark is willing to allow him to continue to pitch. Home run, Baker. Takes the pitch from Nick Maddox. 4-10. And that is going to be a double. Baker tripled his second time up in RBI triple, and now he has hit a double here in the top of the eighth inning. Nick Maddox is not done yet. He's not done yet. Danny Murphy comes up to the plate, the right field. Maddox glances over his shoulder to Baker to keep him honest. They are going to not hold Baker, not at second. Danny Murphy ready for the pitch. Here it comes from Maddox. 5-2, fly ball to right field. Back goes Chief Wilson. Wilson gets underneath it. He makes the catch and uh, not deep enough for Baker to advance. So that is one away. Brings up first baseman Stuffy McKinnis. Nick Maddox looking back to Baker to keep him honest. And here we go. Maddox ready to throw the pitch into the first baseman. McKinnis waits. One, seven. And that is a shot to the right field corner. Baker is rounding third. He will score. Stuffy McKinnis rounding second. The throw comes in from Wilson. McKinnis guns for third, makes it in. And the Athletics score another run. Triple by Stuffy McKinnis. 5-1 to one, Philadelphia. Jack Berry comes out to the plate. Nick Maddox is done. Maddox is coming out of the ballgame. Mm. Pardon. Excuse me while I whip this out. Maddox is coming out of the ballgame. Mm. And Babe Adams is going to come in to relieve. Maddox went seven and a third. The Tessie song, I forgot that he had called that. I forgot that uh, Tommy Leach called it the Tessie song. Yep, I'd forgotten about that. All righty. Blackjack Berry, Stuffy McKinnis on third, one out top of the eighth. Athletics have scored their fifth run. They have a four-run lead. Babe Adams comes in, takes a few warm-up pitches with George Gibson. Gets the ball back. The umpire calls play ball. Barry walks into the batter's box. A couple of warm-up swings. Adams looks into Gibson. Gets the sign. Here it comes from Barry. Four, six. And that's a single. McKinnis scores. And that's going to bring up Jack Lapp catcher. It is six to one athletics. Lapp. Adams sizes him up. Barry is on first. 
Here comes the pitch. One, four, hard ground ball hit to third base. Baker is able to get it to second to get Barry over to first for lap. Not in time. It was a slow shot to uh, burn. I'm sorry. Slow shot to burn. And that was Miller and Abstein. So we got Barry going to second. Five, four, fielder's choice for lap. And that's going to bring up Eddie Plank, and Eddie Plank is going to see this one to the end. Plank takes the pitch from Babe Adams, four, six, and Plank with a single, laces a base hit. Lap gets the second, and they'll hold him there. Briss Lord, left fielder, comes up to the plate. Adams looks in, gets a sign from Gibson. Here's the windup. Here is the pitch. 6-10, fly ball to right field. Owen Wilson comes in a little bit, waits for the ball to drop, and makes the catch. And the Athletics score two more. It is 6-1. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Ah. Just remember one thing, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If Kenny Rogers, if David Cohn can throw a, a perfect game on Yogi Berra Day, I can quote Yogi Berra 40, 45 years before he played. <laughs> ah, 35 years. Eddie Plank on the hill for the Athletics wants to see this through. Top of the order due up for the Pirates. Bobby Byrne, Tommy Leach, Fred Clark. Here we go. Bottom of the eighth of the inning, Bobby Byrne looking to get something going. Top of the order for the Pirates, one, nine. Hard ground ball hit to Jack Berry, scoops it up. Routine grounder gets it over to Stuffy McKinnis. That is out number one. Eddie Plank looks satisfied, looks pleased. Looks into the dugout, sees Connie Mack. Actually, with a smirk on his face. One might think it was a smile. Seems to be enjoying himself in there, chatting it up with the boys. Tommy Leach. Is ready to go. Plank with the pitch. One away. Bottom of the eighth. One, eight. And it is a single. A base hit for Tommy Leach. So the Pirates are on base. They need to keep this going. Fred Clark. Ready to accept the pitch from Eddie Plank. Here comes the wind up. The pitch. Two, nine. And it is a base hit. A single for Clark. Tommy Leach. Rounding second. Headed for third. And he is in safely. Men at the corners. One out. Bottom of the eighth inning. And the Pirates have some business going here, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Eddie Plank. He sees what's happening. He knows what he needs to do to clamp it down. Infield is not in. Not here in the eighth. They've got a double play possibility. Hannes Wagner ready for the pitch from Eddie Plank. Here it comes. 3-9. Single for Hannes Wagner. And Tommy Leach is going to score. And that's going to get Fred Clark around a third. And the Pirates score a run when they need it. But they need more than one. Score is 6-2. to two. And That's going to bring up Owen Wilson, right fielder. The dice are hot. Eddie Plank knows it. He wants to get out of this inning. Owen Wilson is ready to receive Eddie Plank's pitch. 6-5. And that is a hard liner. Hit the first. Stuffy McKinnis, glove all over it. Saves the base hit. And that is two outs. Men at the corners for the Pirates. Brings up second baseman, Dots Miller. Miller. 279 batter in the 1909 regular season. Face is Eddie Plank. Plank gets the sign in from Jack Lapp. He likes what he sees. He looks over to third to keep Clark close. Glance at first to keep Wagner honest. Here comes the pitch to Miller. 4-4. Four, four, fly ball to center field. Rue Bouldering gets underneath it. Calls off right fielder Danny Murphy. Makes the catch. Pirates score one in the bottom of the eighth, but they've got the bottom of the order coming up for the ninth inning. Six to two, Philadelphia Athletics. Do up for the Athletics. Two, three, four, the heart of the order. Rue Bouldering, Eddie Collins, Frank Baker, and they are going to leave Babe Adams in the game. They know he can do it. Old ring set to take Adam's pitch. Adam gets the sign from George Gibson. Here is the windup, the kick, the pitch. Five, five, strikeout. Catches Rube Old ring. Swinging at the knee cheese. Eddie Cocky Collins, one away here. Top of the ninth. A's up by four. 
The pitch from Babe Adams, 4-7. That is a hard ground ball. Hits the second base. Dots Miller is all over. It gets it to Bill Abstein, and that is out number two. That is going to take us to Frank Baker. Home run, candlestick maker, Baker, Super Sport 22,000. Glad you could make it. Top of the ninth, A's up 6-2. Pirates are not done yet. Two outs, top of the ninth, home run, Baker, 3-5. And a fly ball hit to center field. Back goes Tommy Leach, gets underneath it, makes the catch. And it all comes down to this. Bottom of the ninth inning. Pittsburgh Pirates are down four runs, due up the bottom of their order. They know what they've got to do. They've just got to do it. And standing in the Pirates' way, among others, Gettysburg Eddie. He's going to see it through. Do up Bill Abstein, George Gibson, Nick Maddox. There will be some pinch hitting in here. I am sure of it. First up is going to be Bill Abstein. He is going to take Plank's pitch. Here we go. Bottom of the ninth. 6-6. Six, six. Uh, fly ball to center field. Rube Aldrin gets underneath it. He camps out, smacks his mitt, looks up, and makes the catch. That is one away. Brings us to catcher George Gibson. Gibson is going to swing. Uh, here we go. George Gibson. Couple of wind up swarm up swings. Eddie Plank looks into Jack Lapp. He knows he's two outs away from a dead ball championship series victory. The whole ball of wax, the whole shooting match. George Gibson is ready. Here comes the pitch from Eddie Plank. Three, nine, and Gibson is on base with a single. And we're going to have a pinch hit situation for Babe Adams. Not like you needed to be told that. <laughs> Let me put the pitcher hitting card over here so it won't fall down. All of you stay there. I didn't even make it over there. Hold on. Oh, let's just move you guys because I can't see you. All right. Don't know how far I moved the dice tower, but that's all right. We are going to have a pinch hitter. For Maddox, for Adams, rather, pinch hitter is going to be Ham Hyatt. Ham Hyatt, pinch hitter. Uh, he is a 114 and a D stealer. We are going to have a pinch runner for um, Mr. Gibson, the catcher. And it is going to be, even though he was not with the team, I made a card for him. He is on the team, Jap Barbeau. I have a card here for Jap Barbeau. Pinch runner. I am not cheating. I have used these extra cards that each team has, and I am using it now. All righty. Pittsburgh, we got to make it. We've got to do this. Philadelphia saying, we got to do this. Eddie Plank is like, man, just one hard ground ball hit to Jack or Eddie, and this is all over for all the beans. Barbo starts on first. Ham Hyatt at the plate. Eddie Plank gets the sign in from Jack Lapp. Here we go. John Mick, glad you can make it. Possibly the last at bat of the series. A's are up 6-2. to two. Man on first. One out. Bottom of the ninth. Eddie Plank with the pitch to Ham Hyatt. And it's a long fly ball. Rube Aldrin gets chased back by the wall. Makes the catch. Out number two. Bobby Byrne comes up to the plate. Pinch runner Jet Barbeau is on first base. 
He will be running on contact. Eddie Plant gets the sign in. <sighs> gets the sign in from Jack Lapp. And Barbeau is off for second base, and he makes it. Barbeau steals second. Gutsy call by Fred Clark. Chance to run themselves out of the series. Barbeau slides into second. Bobby Byrne is ready. Eddie Plank does not look shaken. Focused in his goal. Here comes the pitch. 6-5. Hard liner hit the right. No. Stuffy McKinnis' glove is all over it, and that's the game. That's the series. Athletics win it. They win the heartbreaker. Oh, my goodness. They win the heartbreaker. Yeah, Cubs win. Cubs win. <laughs> Wrong teams. But, yeah, same feeling. Ah, uh, the Philadelphia Athletics. Uh, hats off to Philly. Hats off to Connie Mack and the Mack men, definitely. One heck of a season. One heck of a game. One heck of a series. Absolutely. Hats off to the Mack men. Uh, we'll do some stats here. But we're not going to vote for player of the... Well, we'll vote for player of the game, but then we'll want player of the C series. And we'll kind of go through. So, guys, if you don't mind hanging out for a little bit, um, player of the game... We can do a quick vote for player of the game. Eddie Plank went nine. He allowed one, two, three, four, five, six hits in two runs. Um, Eddie Collins, two of five with an RBI triple, which scored to go ahead run the first inning. Stuffy McKinnis, three of four with an RBI triple and scored a run, scored two runs. Um, three triples in the game. Jack Lapp, the catcher. Uh, Jerry Ball, and I kind of agree with him. Eddie Plank, hands down, because the pitchers get player of the game in dead ball. <laughs> Let me move this out of the way to the side here a little bit. Oh, yeah, let's just a quick hit vote for player of the game. Then I really want to get player of the series. Series MVP. Ah, uh, athletics go there, and then we'll hit the chat for a couple of minutes. Guys, it's over. The Dead Ball Project is in the books. Gosh, it was so fun. Uh, Eddie Plank, I think it's going to be a consensus. Eddie Plank is getting player of the game on this one. He really is. Player of the game, Eddie Plank. Let's write the final score in here, 6-2. to two. So Eddie Plank, and the last time Eddie Plank pitched, it was a complete game win. Uh, game one, as a matter of fact. Uh, but co-player of the games because Rube Oldring had that base-clearing triple to take the lead, as he did in game three. Rube Oldring had a base-clearing triple to take the lead. Scored, drove in the only runs of the game. Even though Jack Coombs got player of the game there. So let's cap it up for the Athletics. Uh, they won game one. Eddie Plank and Rube Oldring. We've got game two, the Pirates won. Game three, the Athletics won. Complete game shutout for Jack Coombs. Rube Oldring. All the runs scored. Uh, game four, the Pirates won. Game five, the Athletics won, and everybody did everything. Rube Oldring, four of six, with three runs batted in and a home run. Chief Bender, complete game win. Only gave up three runs. Rube Oldring has been in three games here so far. And in game six, hands down, Eddie Plank. So Eddie Plank has got two wins. Rue Bouldering has been very timely and clutch on the hits. I think it's between those guys right there. Dave S., how's it going? Glad you could make it good, sir. Um, let's have everybody throw in a vote. Kenny Castro in the chat as well. Glad you could make it good, sir. Um, everybody throw in a vote.
Uh, I'm going to put it between Rube Oldring and Eddie Plank for series MVP. And we'll give it a minute. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. It was worth looking. It is over. So unfortunately, you know how it turned out. But it was a very nail-biting game to the end. We've got Rube Oldring. We've got Eddie Plank. Rube one. Eddie one. We have Rube with two more. Oh no. Is my favorite baseball player going to get the series MVP? You can't let it happen. Guys, it'll go to my head. <laughs> oh. Ref with his real name. He hated the moniker Chief. Well, what he was a oh. And I know he was Indian. I just don't remember what people. Um, but yeah, let's see. Old ring, plank, old ring, old ring. We'll let this go for another 30 seconds or so, but it's looking like if you guys want Eddie Plank to get series MVP, you better put it in there. Chippewa, thank you. Rube and Eddie for Co. Jerry Ball. And I agree with that. And I'm going to put my vote in for Co. Uh, it's either Rube or Co MVPs, guys. What do you think? You're more than welcome to change it around. Rube gets another vote. That is four for Rube Oldring. Let it go another 20 seconds or so. Sorry, just taking a drink. Um, Bender was good friends with Jim Thorpe. That is not... Thoroughly surprising. It really isn't. As good an athlete as Jim Thorpe was. Higher Ground Gaming comes in with one more for Ruby. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I'll give six seconds. I didn't realize that Bender also went to Carlisle. Okay. I'll give another five seconds for the delay. Wait for last second votes. D B L series MVP. Reboldering. Dead ball series MVP Reboldering. And Rube comes out and he takes a bow. And he calls Eddie Plank on out there. He says, come on out, Eddie. You deserve this as much as I do. And the two of them stand there. They're waving at the fans. They're waving at everybody in Forbes Field. And the folks in Forbes Field, though filing out, some are offering um, congratulations because they know that it is a job well done in spite of what they wanted to happen. The athletics really, really put it to Berg. <sighs> wow, that's the dead ball season. That is the dead ball league right there. Wow. I can't believe it's over. <laughs> that's all right, though. We've got all kinds of other stuff to do. Uh, Dave, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Jerry Ball, Beatles Eternally, Clinton Parks has a great channel. Check him out, guys. He's got a lot of uh, computer replays for baseball. Um, National Pastime 3, Diamond Mine Baseball, as I recall. Check him out. Clinton Parks. Fantastic channel. Wonderful gentleman. Very knowledgeable about baseball. A very fun time anytime I'm in on his chat. Um, others in the chat, Higher Ground Gaming, another one, Eric and his co-host, Mr. Brody, check him out. He's got a lot of fantastic stuff going on on his channel as well. Higher Ground Gaming, check him out. Dave S., our friend from up north, A, he uh, is my hockey muse. And just so everyone knows, hockey is going to start to uh, creep back into the channel a little bit. Now that Dead Ball is done, I had to finish this project before I could uh, try to continue others. 
now that it is this uh frees me up to be able to do some other things mp fox in the chat glad you could make it man fantastic kenny castro as always glad you could make it in good sir uh, Super Sport 22,000. I know he was in here. Glad you could come in. Da Cubs, Da Bears. That's right. Gary Marr, Beatles Eternally. Al Red Sox fan. Another fantastic cha channel and good friend of the channel. Check out his channel. Uh, he's got a lot of sports replays, especially centered around his beloved Red Sox. And a fantastic fantasy boxing thing, too. Check him out. Al Red Sox fan. Oh, John Mick 81. Glad you can make it into the chat this evening, sir. William Miller. Glad you can make it. Did not see you in the middle of everything going on, but I'm glad you could make it, man. Fantastic. A lot of new people in here this evening. Uh, de -duh. Derek Dodgers Royals fan as always. I'm glad you can make it, brother. Um, there was another one. Wow, and I'm only halfway up. No. Let's keep going. I want to thank everybody that made it in here, and hopefully I'm not going to miss anybody. Uh, yep. Higher ground. Everybody, thank you. It's been a fun game. It's been a fun series. It's been a fun project, and you guys have helped make it that way. That's the one I'm going to remember from this one. Jerry Ball. A triple by a catcher. Wow. <laughs> Hey, these guys did that. I mean, you figure Stuffy McInnes, he was the backup shortstop behind Jack Berry. <laughs> these guys played all over the place and were able to do it. Michael Butler, glad you could make it to the chat. Larry Harris, OH, baby. Oh, man. I didn't get the Donnybrook I was looking forward to. You guys didn't fight or nothing. Mike McAllister, glad you could make it this evening. Uh, fantastic seeing you, brother. Glad you were here. Butterbench FB, and I do believe that pretty much covers everybody. And that gets me to the top of the order. Ken Castro just went to an East Coast Hockey League game. Clinton Park says he's getting an ECHL team next year. Uh, yes, triples live in dead ball. Triples were the dead ball equivalent of the home run because, yeah, you didn't have to hit it over the fence, and you cleared the bases if you had base runners on it. Ah. I don't know what else to say. It was fantastic. It really was. I had fun. I don't want to dawdle. I'm going to go ahead and get going. Um, guys, thank you so much. So enjoyed spending this time with you. And it is going to continue in the future, I guarantee. Here is to many more live streams where you guys get to pick on me about, oh, I didn't break out the whiteout for the final game of the series. Look at that. Look at that. No whiteout. I made it through a game with no whiteout. Yes. <laughs> uh, Ken Castro, I just want to say that Earl's tournament was the best time I've had in a long way. You cats need to come next year. Ken Castro went to the Heartland APBA baseball tournament put on by Earl with an E Shamblin out in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Um, from Tabletop Baseball Plus, another fantastic channel. Check him out. Place fourth, our Kenny did. Good job there, brother. It was a APBA baseball. Um, oh, man. I would have loved to have been there. Yes, the whiteout is not the most valuable player of the series. That goes to Rube Oldring for the Dead Ball League Championship. And this is Chris, Stratomatic Delaware, saying, guys, thank you. Have a wonderful week. Keep on rolling.